and welcome to a Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad you could join us for this time in the Word as we continue our study on faith foundations. We have a wonderful time to spend together, and uh, I'm excited about sharing tonight's uh, lesson with you. And uh, we're going to jump right straight in here with both feet, all right? <coughs> Praise God. Uh, you can go ahead and get your Bible turned to first. Uh, or 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, we're talking tonight about faith versus feelings. Faith versus feelings. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth, the great English apostle of faith, uh, once made this statement. I can't understand God by feelings. I can't understand the Lord Jesus Christ by feelings. I could only understand God the Father and Jesus Christ by what the word says about them. God is everything the word says he is. We need to get acquainted with him through the word. Praise the Lord. And, you know, so often you hear people say, well, I feel like, well, I feel like, I feel like. Um, basically what they're saying is their opinion about it is and not what the Bible says. Uh, I feel like God does this, and I feel like God thinks this way. Well, but there's no basis for it. I even had a discussion with someone today, you know, in original creation, that, you know, uh, they felt like God created multiple atoms around the planet, and Eve, and uh, it wasn't just one atom. And um, when you try to discuss it with them, they just um, shut you down. You know, well, you know, we're not going to agree, and uh, we don't need, you know, this kind of thing, and their opinion is, and... You know, you could have nine theologians and they would have different opinions. Well, you could have nine theologians with nine different opinions and they could all be wrong. What the word says is true. And, um, you know, the Bible makes it clear. By one man, sin passed unto all. Hallelujah. Sin entered in. God created Adam and Eve. If you look at the lineage, God was the, was the father of Adam in reference to he physically, he created him individually and then everything else was procreated from there. Um, and that's the same thing is true with all Scripture. We can come up with our we think this, you know, uh, God's a God of love. He would never judge anybody. Yet the scripture's full of scripture about judgment. So we can't go by that. We always have to go by the word. Our feelings and our opinions are irrelevant to the written word. They must come in line with that. Hallelujah. So, um, let's look, if you will, uh, um, <clears throat> because we, want to, we, we need to un make this very clear. There's a simple formula for faith. It has nothing to do whether you yeah, and listen, a lot of times we're talking about feelings in this kind of type of setting. We're talking about your senses, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, uh, make up your soul. And th that governs the senses of sight, of smell, of taste, of hearing, of touch. I think I covered all five of them just then. Hallelujah. Sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing. Yeah, I got them all. All right. I had to count them. Yeah. All right. Um. But the truth of the matter is, God's word is the final authority. And I don't think the word is as complicated to understand as people make it out. I Actually, the reason it gets complicated is because there's people who um, interpret the word through their senses instead of letting the word change their senses. Uh, first, or Second Corinthians chapter one, verse nineteen and twenty states, "For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached unto uh, uh, you among you by us, uh, even by Silvanus and Timotheus, uh, by me, Silvanus and Timotheus, um, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God." by us. Um, the Weymouth translation states it this way. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
he was proclaimed among you by us, that is Silas and Timothy and myself. Okay, so you could really, Paul, Paul put that in there, but you could almost take that out. Uh, and it was, it was like a side thought that comes back to a main thought. Um, so let me, let me just take, I'm not changing the Bible. He makes a statement, it was proclaimed to him by Silas Timothy himself. But uh, for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we're going to leave that out, um, did not show himself a waverer between yes and no. That's the main thought. The other is a side thought that he put in there that, that you, you divert something and come back. So I'm going to read this way. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did not show himself a waverer between yes and no. But it was... And always is. I love that. It was and always is yes with him. Glory to God. For all the promises of God, whatever their number, have their confirmation in him. And for this reason, through him also our amen acknowledges their truth and promotes the glory of God through our faith. <clears throat> That's the Weymouth translation. Now, he says here that uh, all the promises of God, whatever they never have their confirmation. The, in the Weymouth translation, just like in the King James, you'll have uh, you know, um, footnote numbers or, or you know, numbers to look to your margin. And in the Weymouth, it has a margin. And when you go to the margin on this word confirmation, uh, Weymouth states that it is literally in the Greek, the yes, the yes, which he interpreted to mean confirmation, okay, when he, when he, so he used the word confirmation, but he said literally the Greek says the yes, so let's say it that way, for all the promises of God, whatever their number, have the yes in him, wow, you know, growing up, growing up in the classical church that I grew up in, um, we would approach the scripture this way. We would say, um, God answers prayer three ways. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and then we get real spiritual and say, sometimes maybe. <clears throat> we thought we'd be spiritual. No, he says here he answers prayers one way. Yes. To his promises, he says yes. Okay? Our amen acknowledges their truth. In other words, a word amen means so be it. It is an agreement term. So be it. Their truth and promotes the glory of God through our faith. Praise God. And so here we have it. That the promises of God, the word of God, have to supersede our feelings, our senses. Amen. Look at Mark 9, 23. Mark chapter 9. And we could, we could really back up. Um, verse 21. Remember that Jesus had come down and there was a... a parent there who was just distressed because the disciples couldn't cast the devil out of his son and uh, he asked the father how long is ago since this came unto him and he said of a child and oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us in other words if you if, if there's any, if you can help us Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. See, it's not a question of his ability, but of your faith. He put it right back on him. See, it wasn't a question of whether he could. The question was, can you believe? Hallelujah. And oftentimes... One of the things that gets in the way of our believing is the circumstances talk to us so loud that we cannot focus on our faith. The circumstances preach to us. The circumstances, I mean, they hoop to us. They go, yeah, you're going to fail. 
you're not a going to make it. I mean, they, they, I mean they, get, they put get a Hammond B3 organ in the background. You're never going to achieve what you want. And uh, I want you to know today that you shall fail. Do, 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 do. I mean, you got, you got it all going. It'll preach to you. And I'm sure you probably had your circumstances preached to you. And that's a problem because the circumstances are not the final authority. But we will give heed because why? We see it. Our feelings um, hook right up with that and start to shout in the hoop with it. I'm going to fail. I don't know what I'm going to do. We can't go there. Why? Because we have promises from God. And what we have to do is believe. <clears throat> if thou canst believe. Amen? I mean, the father comes up in the next verse and says, I believe, help my unbelief. Now, I like what Mark Brzee said about that. He said, what the man says was, Lord, I believe my head's giving me a fit. Well, see, faith is of the heart and not of the head. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. So you can believe in your head, give you a fit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so um, you have to come to the place where the circumstances don't override faith. Look at Romans chapter 4. Romans, the fourth chapter. Now, we know when we study this that in Genesis, the 13th chapter, God appeared to Abram when he was 70 and five years old. And told him that he would uh, he would uh, have a have a seed. He'd be the sand of the seashores and the stars of the heaven. And then he returned at ninety and nine, and said, "I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect, even as I am perfect." And says, "As me for me, as for me, my covenant between me and thee." And then he goes on once again and reiterates what he told him twenty four years before. And then states that he would have a son that same season next year. Hallelujah. And Abraham laughed within himself and said, Shall I, you know, and, and the Lord basically rebukes him. And uh, he kind of snaps out of it and um, tries to offer Ishmael as the substitute. And that's a whole nother deal there. Uh, Sarah got fed up waiting. So she offered him her handmaiden. He went into the handmaiden, had a child. She got upset about it. And then we got Ishmael to deal with. And the Lord says, I'll, I'll hear you. I'll bless him. But that's not, that's not the promise. Your name is named Isaac, and in Isaac shall thy seed be. Hallelujah. And so uh, Romans in the fourth chapter, in referencing uh, this, this uh, event in Abraham's life, um, verse 18 states, who against hope believed in hope. Now, we've quoted that before from the Weymouth. Under utterly hopeless circumstances, he hopefully believed. Hallelujah that he might become the father of many nations according as it is written <coughs> according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now let's look at verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he promised, he was able to perform. Now, the NIV states it and says, without weakening in faith, he, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet, he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he promised. Now remember, all the promises of God find the yes in him. And our amen acknowledges their truth to the glory of God through our faith. Now back up here in verse 19 where it says, when he was, he was not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. The word considered comes from a Greek word that means to observe fully. 
I mean, just to sit there and to observe. And, and so, he said, now, if you'll notice, these, the King James and the, and the NIV word this. It sounds like opposite, but not really. Okay? Um, King James says he considered not his own body, now dead. When, in other words, he did not fully observe the contradictory circumstances. He didn't focus on them. They were there. Didn't say, did, <clears throat> didn't say and, and of course NIV bears it out from a different, using a different approach to these two verses, or three verses, that he didn't, he didn't accept that or see that or say that was, okay, that's there. It's that he did not allow them, because um, the King James goes on since he staggered not. The, the NIV uses the, the point, an antithetical point, yet he did not waver. So they are expressing the same thought, but wording it and constructing it differently, but coming into the same place. In other words, the circumstance was he was old. Sarah's womb was dried up. It ceased to be with her after the man of women for years. I mean, it wasn't like it just happened yesterday. She's 89 when this takes place. Okay? And um, praise the Lord. And he, the Bible says, okay, there's the circumstance. But I've got the promise of God. You see? When we're talking about faith versus feelings, we're not going to talk about Christian science and deny what's, what's there in the physical. We're not going to deny something that, that is taking place. <coughs> and I've got water on the top there in a cup. Can I get that? My throat's a little, it's trying to tickle me. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I need to, I need to have a little something to drink. Praise the Lord. Um, when, when we have circumstances going on, and situations going on. And um, we, we are facing, what are we going to believe? Now remember, um, at the end of chapter 52 of the book of Isaiah, it, it says, Lord, who hath be, uh, believed our report? And to, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Amen. We, we sing that song. Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And... Um, Excuse me. Thank you for your patience. Hallelujah. There, there's a report. There's a report from circumstances. Like I said before, they will preach to you. They'll rise up with every bit of authority and the declaration of their reality um, and state that they are the real thing. Hallelujah. When the truth of the matter is, as Jonah says, they're lying vanities. Hallelujah. They're lying vanities. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that Abraham had that circumstance that was a lying vanity. Why? It was a lying vanity because God had said, God had said that you will bear a son, you will name him Isaac, and he shall be multiplied, he shall be the seed, that I'll fulfill my promise that you'll have the sand of the sea, your seed will be as the sand of the seashores and the stars of the heaven. Glory to God. So, it was a lying vanity. It was a circumstance that in the natural was real. Yet, there was a promise made. Who against hope believed in hope, hallelujah, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? And his faith was not <coughs> detoured by the circumstances. His faith was not, he didn't stagger. He didn't go, yeah, the Lord gave me a word, but oh my God, how's this going to happen? I'm in trouble. This is a mess. I'm so old. Look at my wife, oh dear Lord. Uh, I mean, she's 89. 
and cease to be with her after the manner of women. I mean, how, how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to handle this? I mean, you know, what am I going to See, he's not doing all that. The Bible says he's staggered not. Why? Because he chose to believe God's word. And God, <coughs> and God doesn't give his word so that we can go, Lord, do such and such if it be thy will. If he's given us his word, it's his will. If he's declared it in his word, it's his will. I'll say it one more time. If he's declared it in his word, it's his will. Amen. And the Bible says this. I, I love this. But, you know, he staggered not at the promise of God. Why? Because, what did we read earlier from the Weymouth? Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, for all the promises of God, whatever their number, have the yes in him. Have the yes in him. Hallelujah. And for this reason, through him also, our amen acknowledges their truth. What? The truth of the promise. The truth of the promise. The truth of the promise. Hallelujah. It's a higher truth than your circumstance. It's a higher truth than what you see. It's a higher truth than what you taste. It's a higher truth than what you see and hear and touch and smell. His promise is a higher truth. And Abraham was able to leap over contradictory circumstances to the promise of God because he accepted it as the higher truth and that he was able and being fully persuaded. I love that. Fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Hallelujah. That's why we read later that when Isaac was being offered up, he had received him raised from the dead in a figure. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and return again unto you. Knowing the Lord said, go offer him on the altar. But the same God that said, go offer him on the altar, had already told him in Isaac, his seed would be. And Isaac's only 13. He's not, he don't have any kids. So the only way that God's word could be true, that God's promise could be true, and he's already received him born into the earth by believing that promise, was that God would have to take those ashes and raise his son back up out of those ashes from the dead and give him back to him. Because God said that Isaac would be his seed. God declared, the same God that said this time next year you'll have a son and you'll call him Isaac. And he sh he's going to be the seed of the promised covenant. He said, now go offer him on that altar. Hallelujah. And of course that's a whole other line of this, this covenant relationship between Abraham and God. Abraham offered his son by faith giving God the, uh, the reciprocal opportunity to offer Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Abraham gave him his son. God was going to give Abraham his son. If you be Christ, that he Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have here. And a faith versus feelings or contradictory I mean, feelings being circumstances that we see in the flesh, we see in the natural, see by our senses, coming and butting head to head. Now one's going to win. Either the circumstances are going to win or faith is going to win. But we have a, we have a, we have the word declaring to us. 
We have the word declaring to us that all the promises of God, whatever their number, find their confirmation or the marginal reading of Wayman says, find the yes in him. See, when God made a promise, there was already a yes attached to it. Hallelujah. He promised it because he intended on doing it. Can I get an amen out there? He promised it because he intended on doing it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And then he goes on and says, but see, what? Well, that's where our faith comes in. And for this reason, because our faith, remember, he promised it. The yes is in him. And for this reason. Think about that. Through him also our amen. What's the reason? The yes is in him. You're not... When God gives a promise, we don't have to wonder if it's his will. I said, when God gives a promise, we do not have to wonder if it's his will. That's why he gave the word. Hallelujah. But we find the yes in him. And for this reason, through him also, our amen acknowledges their truth and promotes the glory of God, what? Through our faith so here Abraham in a contradictory situation his body the body of his wife all cried out that what God promised could not be let me say that again the Abraham's body at 99 Sarah's body at 89 all cried out that what God just told Abram could not be But Abram believed God according to that which was spoken. So shall the seed be. And received the answer. He received by faith. And then, you know, in Genesis 18, um, you know, the Lord appears to Abram again. He cooks the meal and so forth. And um, it's talking about the event that was to come and Sarah overhears it. She's laughing on the other side of, of the uh, tent wall and the Lord wants to know why she's laughing. She, I didn't laugh. <laughs> yeah, I heard you laugh. Go, go lie to the Lord. Because she got busted. Hello. And he straightens that out and then that, I mean, then here comes along little baby Isaac. Hallelujah. Amazing what happens when you get into faith. I say it is amazing what happens when you get into faith. Praise God. When you get into faith, when you, when you accept. So faith is not saying, um, I'm not 99. That's stupid. Faith is saying that I might be 99, but the Lord said I'd have a child. And I'm going to accept the promise of God. Hallelujah. And then receive that answer and receive that promise. Amen. Glory to God. So let's look, if you will, to the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Now remember your four um, epistles of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, the General Electric Power Company. Hallelujah. Thou keep them in order for you. Those four. Forget the rest of them. Thou keep those four in order for you. Huh? Go eat popcorn. That could be a bad confession for some folks. So we don't want to we don't want to mess up anybody's keto diet. Glory to God. Be careful for nothing, but with everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. We have to praise God for the answer. We have to accept his word and then praise him for the answer. Thank him for the answer. Thank him that his word is true. Well, praise gets our mind off of the circumstances and gets it on God. When we get our mind on God, hallelujah, 
and not on the circumstances. Amen? Hallelujah. Great peace. Hallelujah. Uh, I, believe, I, I may be paraphrasing this a little bit, uh, but great peace have they whose mind is stayed on thee. We have to keep our mind stayed on him. Hallelujah. Focused on him. And notice what happens when you keep your mind on him. Amen? Be careful for the anxious. The word anxious here means careful. Uh, careful means anxious. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean being methodical or aware. It means being anxious. Okay? So be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And look what happens. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Think about that. What's going on with the mind? The mind is connected to all your feelings, your senses. And it's wanting, it's wanting to uh, interpret all that stuff. And it's wanting to lay hold of all that stuff. It's wanting to import all that information. While faith is overriding that information with a promise from God that says, say amen, agree with it, and receive it, and walk in it. Glory to God. Let's, uh, let's go and we'll conclude over here. Um, in John 20, over in John 20, Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. But Thomas, verse 24, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, now remember Jesus had appeared to them, said, peace be still, um, receive you the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, Thomas is gone. He's not there on this event. So um, the other disciples, therefore, said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas he said unto them, except I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. What's he saying? I saw him die. I saw him put into the tomb. And unless I see him alive, I ain't going to believe it. Unless I can walk over and touch him, I ain't believing it. So what's he doing? He's saying his senses take more authority than anything. And after eight days again, the disciples were, were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be still, or peace be unto you. And he said unto Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it in my side, and be not faithless, or as the margin said, unbelieving, but believing. Be not faithless. But believing. And Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they are have believed. This was not a commendation to Thomas. It was a rebuke. Amen. You'll never get Abraham's blessings with a Thomas kind of faith. Now I know that's the old David Engel song. You'll never get Abraham's blessings with a Thomas kind of faith. The mountain will just stand there in the same old place. If you have to see it first, believe it, touch it, or taste. You'll never get Abraham's blessings with a Thomas kind of faith. Okay. Love the song. All right. Anyway, you're not going to get the blessings. If you got to see it, if you're going to have Thomas's faith, Thomas's faith is, I must see it to believe it. Jesus said that faith is, they believe even if you can't see. And that's the man who is blessed, not the Thomas guy.
Now, Thomas got straightened out. And uh, church history tells us he worked many miracles and did many signs and wonders. Um, but Thomas was here in verse 25 where he says, except I see the print and nails. That was his feelings overcoming faith. He was saying, my feelings are more real than faith. My feelings carry more authority than faith. Then Jesus appears and rebukes him for that. And uh, we know the you know, from church history, he became a, a mighty worker of miracles. Uh, went down to some tribes in Africa that worshipped the water. You know, they, would, they would go out in the rivers and splash water, and, and then they worshipped the rainbow crystals that would be created from the splashing in the water in the sun. And he, he commanded the waters to stand still, and it froze in the air. They all got saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you say amen? And that's church history. And so Thomas was moved by his feelings until Jesus got, he had to get a message to him. Your feelings don't and cannot reign supreme. Your senses are not final authority. Hello? That which is spoken to you through your sight, through your taste, through your touch, through your hearing, and through your smell. That come in and the, and the mind dissimulates that information. And feeds and, and creates a, um, an opinion or formulates a, um, a belief about things based on that. This is why the word of God says you must receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save or restore, make sound your soul, your, your mind. So then it dissimulates the information that comes out of the word which supersedes your physical senses. Hallelujah. Are you, can you say amen? Can somebody say glory? Can I get even a Shandai out there? We need a little Shandai, little hashtag, whatever that thing is. Those, those are the emoticons down there. You come up with a Shandai one. <coughs> Glory to God. Amen. Uh, next week, um, we're going to get into, um, along these lines, that healing is spiritual. Amen. So that we understand that healing is a spiritual thing. Um, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. We got time here. Healing is spiritual. Remember the word sozo. I mean, you know, um, to be healed, to be saved, to be delivered from um, temporal deliverance from danger and safety and natural, even and spiritual things. We receive healing the same way we receive the new birth. Now, <coughs> oftentimes, the reason people struggle with healing is because they can feel they hurt or because they can see the result of a sickness or injury or, you know, malady or something. They can see it. They can touch it. They can feel the lump. They can feel the pain when they move. Um, they've seen the doctor's report. But the Word of God has something to say about that. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name, and forget not all of his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen? Who healeth, who, who, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Isaiah 53 declares that by his stripes we were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. See, we have promises from God's word. I said we have promises from God's word that supersede <coughs> our feelings, that supersede that which um, our senses tell us. And they may be loud, and they may be strong. And they may be telling the truth. I mean, you know, of, of, uh, in the natural. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? It, 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 it is the natural truth. But there's a higher realm of truth. 
There's a higher realm of reality. There's a higher realm that supersedes all of that. Hallelujah. And I'm trying to get there to something. I will find it. I promise you. Jonah chapter 2. Hallelujah. Listen to verse um, 8. This is, this is, uh, write this down. Jonah 2, 8. Write it down. If, you got, if you're in your Bible, they already got there in your Bible. I mean, get your highlighter out. Get your big stamp, star stamp out. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. <laughs> Let me say that again. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. I'm going to say it one more time. Hallelujah. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Wow. That's why we can't be moved by our senses. Moved by our feelings. We have to be moved by the word of God. We do not want to forsake our own mercy. We do not want to forsake the mercies that God granted to us. We want to accept and receive the mercies God has made available to us that we can receive by faith. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? So healing, that's why people get in trouble a lot of times with healing is they're so caught up on the circumstance and wanting their senses to tell them before they actually go ahead. Now remember, before Abraham went up on that mountain, he'd already received Isaac raised from the dead. Not after. Before he went. Amen. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and return unto you. He had already received him raised from the dead. When it comes to healing, you've got to be the same thing. You've already got, got to receive the answer before it ever shows up, before you ever feel it. And do not observe the lying vanity because you do not want to forsake your mercy. Can you say amen? Anybody got an amen out there for me? Hallelujah. Next week, we'll get into what does it mean to believe with the heart. Amen? We'll start into that next week, and uh, we'll continue on with, with this line of teaching. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to take us, but that's okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a good word. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So say this with me. Say, I will not observe Lying vanities. Because I refuse to forsake my own mercies. Jonah 2 8. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're so happy to have you tonight. Uh, if you're giving for your midweek, uh, uh, the midweek offering, uh, you can do that electronically uh, through PayPal or uh, the Cash App. And uh, we'll just pray. follow. We thank you for those giving right now in the name of Jesus that you bless them, <coughs> <coughs> that you open up heaven's windows and empty out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, don't forget to be with us again on Sunday and live and in person um, as we, we are meeting at uh, New Life Family Church on Sunday afternoons at uh, 1230. Um, we would love to have you in person. It's just so much better. And I tell you, there's some things happening right now in the spirit I need for you to be there. We're, we're, we're coming into something. We're coming into something uh, in the spirit. And uh, we need to be in anticipation of it. Hallelujah. And I, I'm telling you, we, you're going to want to be there when, when this is manifest. Um, and I just don't know when, but I know it's coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, sure appreciate y'all turning in. Uh, turning in. Turning, turning away from 
whatever else you were doing, and tuning in, hallelujah, uh, to tonight's service. Look, we sure love you. We appreciate you. We, we, uh, we're we blessed by your continued um, connection to the church and the ministry and your support. And I want to give you these words once again from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.